Okay, let's get started. So um, you all are here, so I don't think I really need to convince you, but uh, it, it's become obvious that nearly every single consumer or business application needs to have insights and data incorporated into it. Um, it's, it's become standard to position the data that the application is producing and to help people get more insight out of the product through data. Um, and we're going to talk about trends that we're seeing in how that's being done. So the first thing that I would highlight is that this is not a trend that's unique to technology companies or companies in a specific vertical or e-commerce companies. This is something that's relevant to nearly every business in every context. So it's healthcare companies, it's industrial companies, it's consumer companies, it's retail companies, it's obviously gaming and web companies. But everyone has data incorporated into their products and services. And letting your partners and customers get more value out of that data is how you can make more money, but also how you can make customers happier with your product. So we're going to talk about two trends that we're seeing in our customers and just in the market at large about how folks are incorporating data into their products. And the first one seems relatively obvious as well. Um, there's gonna be a lot of advanced common sense in this presentation, but it's good to remember how all these things are happening. So the first one is that users are expecting business tools to look and feel more like consumer applications. And so what does that mean? So Spire is a customer of ours that uh, collects data over a variety of industries, including uh, maritime, so boats, things like uh, the ship that got stuck in the Suez Canal, uh, space information, shipping information for goods and services. And a lot of the core products that they delivered in the past were data as a service. So allowing their customers to take raw data out of their systems or cleaned or enriched data out of their systems and use it for their own purposes to understand uh, shipping services, to understand how goods and services are moving through the economy. And what the team learned over time was that while there are obviously lots of folks that can get a lot of value out of raw data, um, more and more people were not able to get as much value as they wanted to out of these services because they weren't tailored to their capabilities. So there's a set of consumers that can take a set of APIs and they can build their own things. And we're even gonna talk about how folks are doing that with Looker later. But for every one of those people, there's maybe 10 or 100 other people that want application interfaces to understand data. A data feed is one thing, a data application that can help you ask and answer questions is another level of that thing. So what they've decided was to actually take that data service that they have and that enrichment that they're doing and actually build user-facing applications out of it to let more people get value out of their data as a service. And I, I know, again, this seems obvious, but if you think about using tools for home search and things like that, if those products were Excel downloads or CSV files, it's not the same as a complete application to understand homes, to search on a map, and to get value out of that data set. You need to consumerize the experience to engage more users in the product. And thus, with the same data set, you can unlock a lot more value for your users and new markets and potentially new products. So these are other examples of sort of the products that they've built. So, there's a couple concepts that tie into what consumerized means. And I think the first one is this juxtaposition of reactive analytics and, and what I would call sort of reporting versus more proactive analytics. I think when a lot of people associate implementing data in an application, they're really thinking about these reactive use cases. It's, it's what happened, can I pull out a report on what's been happening in the past, I'm doing it once a month, and I, I get it through a CAN dashboard. And I'd be clear, there's a lot of value in these use cases. Everyone needs data, and we're gonna talk about this a little bit later around productization, but it's not a bad thing to be providing those experiences. But where we see another level of value get unlocked, and again, thinking about your consumer experiences with data, faster data sets, integrated intelligence, and ultimately telling you what to do with the data set is where you unlock the next level of value for the customer, for your user. And so when we're thinking about building applications and when our customers are thinking about building applications, it's very often this level one reporting and level two is actually operationalizing that data set and making it so that 
the end user is specifically doing something because they have that data set. So sort of connecting the dots for the user. So an example of this is a company called Waterscan. And they, uh, they help people uh, spend their money better on commercial services around water. Um, so what they did in the past historically was almost exactly this reactive style of analytics. They produced often monthly reports, often through Excel, and they passed them to customers, and they were able to use those data sets to make decisions. With Looker, and by applicationizing their experience, they were able to first cut down the amount of time and effort to build reporting, and there's always value there. But more importantly, they were able to give customers more tools to proactively do the things to improve their services. And what that led to was significant drops in water spend, which is exactly the goal for the service. So again, by just making the data more available, their service just naturally began to work better. And there are other examples of this. So Go Spot Check is a really interesting product. Uh, they do mobile task management services, uh, and that can mean a variety of different things, but it tends to be applications that focus on vision recognition. Um, this is an example of an application that looks at store shelves and analyzes the products available on those shelves. And I think the key here is to think about the modalities of data that's being provided to the end user. So in this application, they're analyzing here soda in a store. And they're building a product that helps people understand and compare uh, sort of comparative presentation of different products in a store. And what's important here is that the data that's integrated with this product is aligned with how the user uses this product. So this is very frequently a product that's used on mobile. They've built a user experience for consuming data that can excel on mobile. And they paired that with a different type of deeper analytical product that can happen on a desktop. So again, thinking really hard about how the user is using data in different circumstances and building the app to actually reflect what the user needs to do in that circumstance. So on the fly, it might be this really quick understanding of what's happening, high level statistics, really simple browsing motions. On desktop, it's deeper analysis. It's, it's sort of more ad hoc analysis but it's, it's the type of things that a bigger computer screen and a keyboard are more apt to help a user with. And so again, thinking about delivering the data product that you have in concert with how the user is actually consuming in your product. So the second trend is almost as obvious or maybe more obvious, but it's this idea that unlocking value for the customer is what leads to unlocking revenue. So in a lot of circumstances, people think about simply dropping data into an application either because they have to or because they want to sell it. And if you think about it that way, it's a little bit backwards towards what the user actually needs to do. What the user wants to do is get more value out of your product and service. If they get more value, they will pay you money. So really focusing on how data can give the customer value leads to the money rather than saying, we need to sell this thing for money and hoping that it creates value to the user. So there are lots of different examples of this, both in our customer base and outside our customer base. Um, SoundCommerce is a retail data platform. So they're actually a product and a service that is built around doing analytics for retailers. This is sort of the, the canonical example of data as a service, where they're ingesting lots of data, they're providing opinionated ways to understand that data. And ultimately, the entirety of the product is around data analysis. Their expertise is providing analysis to their customers. So this is, this is almost a self-obvious example of providing value with data. But lots of companies can take the expertise that they have in a vertical and build products and services that are just about exploring that expertise. So this is a product and service that, uh, that SoundCommerce delivers. Another example is a company like Uberflip. So what Uberflip does is they're a content management system, uh, and they're actually a, a product that Looker uses. Uh, and we use it to deliver out content to share with our customers. So if you go follow up and look for some, some of these case studies after, you're going to be going through our Uber, Uberflip service. And what they found was that while content management is obviously what a customer is buying with their service, a lot of the value of using these types of content management services were around helping the customer create more value out of that content. And again, this is obvious as you walk it, walk it through, but 
The customer is using the system to get people to read reports and download content and ultimately to get them to drive revenue to the business later. And what they found was that by layering in deeper analytics into their service, their customers were able to get more value out of their core content management service. So not only were they able to deliver these reports more effectively and more cheaply, but their customers were able to gather more revenue because of the analytics incorporated into the product. And by doing that, they can gather more revenue ultimately. They have happier customers. They have customers that are retaining better. And it actually becomes a differentiator for the product. Uh, a similar product is, uh, is Allbound. And what Allbound does is they're actually a partner relationship management platform. So again, their core product is effectively a CRM for partner management. And the core of what they learned was that, again, while folks were buying the customer management product to actually understand things, they wanted to know how they could do more and do better with the customers and products in their platform. So they didn't just want to collect partners. That wasn't why they were buying the product. They were buying the product to get more value out of their partnership network. And in layering analytics into their product, they were able to help their customers ultimately unlock more revenue from their service. So a very direct ROI outcome for their end users that they could show through analysis. And this allowed them to invest there and differentiate with that product and ultimately deliver these services that generate upsell for customers. So customers were actually willing to pay money to get a product like this layered on top of the core content management service. Um, Support Trends is another great example that's very similar. Their core product is actually analyzing text from conversations with support orgs. And again, they, they want to focus their efforts on creating more intelligence for support. But th this is actually a problem that Looker recognized early in our life in that you can provide a great service, but a lot of what the product needs to also do is explain how it's doing a great job for you to show its value over time. And data can be a, a really valuable resource for presenting what your application does effectively and showing the users the value they're getting out of their product. So this was a company that invested a lot in their text analysis services and their natural language processing, but what they really wanted to do was to supplement and show that their application was able to add more value to their customers to ultimately drive better retention and to unlock users to sort of focus on the support service um, so we were able to help support them building this application and let them focus on their core sort of functionalities while still showing the value of their services. And the last example that we're going to talk through is a company called Wix. And Wix does website development um, and hosting across millions of users around the world. And I think this is an interesting example of sort of the direct monetization path. Very often in our customers, we see multiple tiers in desire for data. So maybe a typical customer expects reporting to exist. And we're gonna talk about this in a moment as an example, but there's a baseline requirement effectively to provide a low level of analytics. So the value is very much value by requirement for the user. But when you look at what folks actually wanna do on top of these data sets, people value the ability to ask and answer much deeper questions. So it, it's very similar to sort of any service that has a low level free tier and a higher level tier where you can unlock deeper analysis. And this is actually the service that Wix implemented. The core driver of upsell for some of their higher tier platforms is the open-ended analytics that they provide inside the service. So at one level, they have baseline analytics that are available for everyone. And again, the value there is just a service that does website hosting at this point needs to have some level of analytics in the product. But the higher level tiers can actually be unlocked by providing deeper data sets. That has, in and of itself, direct value to those customers. So really what to reflect on here is that at the high level, you want to understand what the users value in your service. Sometimes you just want to be provide, providing data as the cost of doing business. But if you can use your data to unlock more value for your customer, you will get paid for it. And so you can implement these data services very quickly to unlock that quick value. And you can think more deeply about what is that next level of value that I can unlock for a customer? And what do I need to build to provide that? So 
to remind you the two trends. The first is that users are more and more expecting business tools to feel like consumer applications. And that means intuitive to use, simple to use, integrated into what the user needs to do. And the second is that focus on providing value and the revenue will follow behind it, either by better retention in your service or by directly unlocking value for the user through data that they're going to pay you for. So this is something that's recognized broadly by analysts, but I wanna give you a quick example of how we envision that path for a customer. And this is actually a, a, a quick product that we built to sort of show off what we think. So this is a, this is a, uh, a sort of a pretend fashion retailer. And this is actually the type of path that I talked through with Wix that we see becoming incredibly common in businesses of all sorts. So at the high level, uh, one of our sales leaders came up with this term dial tone analytics. And it really is a great example of what is that bare minimum of data that you need to provide to your customer? And that could be a consumer business or that could be a B2B um, product or service or a SaaS business. And it's really important that you can quickly get the baseline services in. So it might be a single page view, it might be a really basic dashboard, but nearly everyone can get this integrated into their product or service, honestly, in a matter of days or weeks. It's something that everyone should do very quickly. The next step is to think about how to productize value add. And that could be deeper products and services, that could be intelligence, that could be consulting, but it's thinking about how to really tightly couple user experience and the data that you have and product building to unlock value that people pay for. So it might be some version of an open-ended exploration environment. It may be deeper dashboards. It may be forecasting and intelligence. There are lots of ways to add value in your data sets. But again, once you have these basic platforms integrated, these basic systems that I talked about, adding that next level of value can actually be very simple. It's really just a matter of finding the levers that customers care about. And then the last step is thinking about monetization. So going back, it's add value first. Once you've created value, it monetizes easily and customers just wanna pay for it. So this is the steps that we see folks going through and this is really becoming the standard for delivering data inside products and organizations. So close it out with a quote from Constellation, but um, the companies that are doing this effectively are the ones that are moving the quickest, the, the fastest and being the most effective. Um, and it's really not a big lift to get these things off the ground. It's really, how do I get the data in front of the user quickly? And then how do I iterate on productizing it into a more transformative situation for the customer?